From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Our top story, the second suspect in last week's shooting at an apartment at the Wedgwood Manor has been identified as 16-year-old Chester Fields. Fairbanks police say Fields was indicted on multiple charges yesterday and will be charged as an adult in the case. An affidavit reports that both Fields and 21-year-old Isaiah Cross went to Wedgwood to, quote, collect money owed to them. Upon arrival, both wore, wore bandanas over their faces and forced their way into the hotel where they reportedly used a BB gun, 40 caliber handgun, and a 9mm handgun. A blood trail led police to the trailblazer where Cross hid after being shot multiple times. Police later contacted 16-year-old Fields and recovered the handgun reportedly used in the shooting. Fields is being held at Fairbanks Youth Facility on other charges without bail. The State Public Offices Commission says Fairbanks City Mayor John Eberhardt violated campaign finance regulations. APOC is ordering Eberhardt to pay $2,884 in fines. He was also directed to reimburse his former employer, Tanana Chiefs Conference, $384 for using phones and copy machines there for his campaign. The fines are in connection with last year's municipal election in which Eberhardt beat Vivian Stiver. APOC had fined Stiver previously for campaign law violations. Eberhardt has 30 days to appeal the ruling. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms is investigating an explosive found outside of Monroe High School last week. Fairbanks police found what officials are calling a homemade explosive outside of the school and phoned ATF for backup. Cheryl Bishop confirmed to the news center that the device was successfully collected and is being sent to the ATF Walnut Creek, California laboratory for testing. An investigation into this case is ongoing. In what was supposed to be a change of plea hearing today, a 21-year-old Fairbanks man may decide to go to trial. Jason O'Brien is facing 19 felony charges, including robbery with a deadly weapon, theft in the second degree, and numerous fraud charges. According to documents, O'Brien said he intended to sell heroin to pay back money he owed, his he owed his grandmother when he robbed a woman of $500 in the Red Fox parking lot in January. Today in court, O'Brien stated he wanted to postpone his change of plea hearing for another 30 days. I, uh, cause he, de he described to me that I had the right to appeal, the, I, I had the right to appeal basically. And I asked if I was allowed to appeal his decision on the representation hearing and I just wanted to know if I'm able to do that. I asked him and he's, he's, he said he's unaware, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to go about appealing it. The state Senate Finance Committee today continued work on Senate Bill 138. The measure covers a gas pipeline and an oil and gas production tax. Mayors of the Fairbanks and Kenai Peninsula boroughs testified, saying municipal governments will be impacted by the outcome of the legislation. Fairbanks North Star Borough Mayor Luke Hopkins told the committee that the local officials' input is necessary during the proceedings so that an equitable contract agreement is reached that will benefit all involved. Ask that uh, 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 that amendments to this legislation uh, state specifically that that there would be a consent by by the municipalities, as the commissioner of natural resources and others sit down and negotiate uh, uh, with the producers. This year's Ice Alaska opened their gates to the public last week, and already the single block sculptures have been judged and awarded their respective prizes. Today, the sculptors were wrapping up last minute repairs and additions to the massive multi block creations. Tonight at 8 p.m., the horn will blow, and judges will begin their task of determining who has sculpted the most creative and breathtaking creations out of the huge blocks of ice. After the judges have reached their decisions, the results will be revealed tomorrow night at 8 o'clock at the Ice Park. Hey everybody, today our world class sculptors are wrapping things up and tomorrow the award winners will be announced at 8 p.m. We'd love to have you come out and enjoy that with us. It's always fun to see who takes home the world championships and it's nice to see them interact with each other. The artists always congratulate each other no matter who takes the top prize. Okay, Daryl, when we come back, we are, are you excited? Because mm -hmm. we're getting zombified for That's Interior Entertainment. Okay, yeah. right. Well, and it's also time to step back into the kitchen for this week's edition of Fairbanks Flavor. Mm. Those two, two stories don't mix really well. Yeah. But we'll see how it Ugh. plays out. Stay with us. <laughs> and welcome back. When growing up, rites of passage usually are getting a driver's license, registering to vote, or turning 21. But one group wants to create a new right, youth empowerment training. 
Organizers at the J.P. Jones Center say the program will offer healthy perspectives of growing up in society and teach teens a deeper meaning of success. The Rites of Passage training is open to all high schoolers in the community. The groups will attend social events, complete service projects, and participate on a STEP team. One of the organizers say STEP teams are dance groups that inspire and teach. What we find is uh, the young folks who are part of the Junior Gents program, it truly become um, a, a major part of their lives. They love the stepping, they love the camaraderie. It is truly a lot of fun. Even kids who thought that they could never perform or were shy or didn't have any dance skills, they are surprised about the potential. Uh, you can register in person at J.P. Jones or online until March 13th. We've posted a link to their website at webcenter11.com. What if you had the chance to relive the past by going back to prom? One local nonprofit organization gives interior residents that chance each year and for a good cause. But it's not without a twist, and the new center has more, and that's entertainment. The Fairbanks Roller Girls are known for their skills in the skating rink, hosting bouts all season and many to raise money for charities. Each year, they also host the well-known Zombie Prom. Started in 2009, it's one of our main fundraisers. Um, so we hold this as um, helping covering our overhead costs. So we are a nonprofit organization. So um, money from our bouts, a portion of the proceeds goes to other charities. Um, and then uh, we hold fundraisers throughout the year to cover our costs so we can keep on playing derby. What is this prom all about? It's basically a big party um, with a zombie theme. So you just get dressed up like a zombie and uh, go and have fun. There's dancing and there's going to be zombie makeup that you can get done, um, contests for best costume. That. This is no regular event. People who attend go big and getting zombified is not an easy task. People get really creative. Uh, they go all out with really movie effect makeup. Um, it's really, really neat. And um, there's a theme each year this year. It's a happily ever afterlife. So we're kind of going with that uh, sort of a Disney princess type theme, um, just zombified. So. The zombie prom is this Friday at the Westmark Fairbanks Hotel from 8 to midnight. I'm Stephanie Woodard, and that's Interior Tainment, brought to you by the Finish Line Restaurant and Lounge. Well, it's time again to step back into the kitchen with Lisa Gambardella for yet another delicious dish that you can cook from the comfort of your own kitchen. Buenos Aires. Welcome to Fairbanks Flavor on Channel 11. I'm Lisa Gambardella, and this is my kitchen downtown at Gambardella's Pasta Bella. Today, we're making a delicious chicken with artichoke hearts. Start with some olive oil in the pan and a little bit of garlic. pan's nice and hot so that garlic sizzles right away. I'm going to put some nice, thin, even chicken breasts in there. We want it to cook evenly. That looks great. I've already got salt and pepper on there so the salt can get right in there in the meat. That looks fantastic. I'm going to add a little white wine. It's great. And I'm going to put in my artichoke hearts. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha, that's hot. <laughs> Look at that. That looks fantastic. Let that reduce a little. And flip it. And add a little chicken stock. This dish is fantastic with a crisp Pinot Grigio from Italy. Nice crisp wine. I'm going to put some fresh parsley in there and lots of fresh lemon. And I'm going to leave the lemon right in there. It's going to pick up the rind flavor. It's fantastic. Woo! And of course some butter. Make it nice and shiny, glossy. Let it reduce. Add some pasta. I like to use angel hair. It's nice and thin. Picks up the sauce, especially a nice light sauce like this. And there is your delicious chicken with artichoke heart, buena sera. Make it at home or enjoy it at Gambardella's Pasta Bella. See our recipes on webcenter11.com. Brought to you by Gambardella's Pasta Bella. 
Geez, Thursdays always make me so hungry. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to make that. I, <laughs> definitely, that one was a keeper. It That's was, sure. definitely. All right, well, switching gears now. Mm -hmm. Joe Cook is next with sports, and he has important news on this year's Arctic Man, plus a... Uh, Oh, another preview. Another preview of the Governor's Cup. Yeah. Stick around for sports with Joe. <laughs> Hello Interior Sports fans, it's Thursday Sports Time. Unfortunate news today for the Art Tip Man. It was confirmed today that Tesoro will not be sponsoring this year's Art Tip Man. This ends a 20-year relationship as a major event sponsor. Race Director Howie, Howie Thies was informed in early January he has to fill $25,000 in sponsorship money in a hurry. The 29th Art Tip Man is still on for April 11th. The decision to no longer be the major sponsor was made by headquarters in Texas by Tesoro. Over 13,000 people were on hand last year alone. The purse in 2013 with 55 teams was $105,000. This year the purse was, is slated to be $112,000 with 60 teams. Here's Thieves on how the Arctic man is moving forward. Especially not to know until January. You know, I could see it in the middle of the summer and in October, you know, when I could find someone else. But when you're only three months away, it's hard to go find a sponsor, you know. But no, we'll find sponsors and we'll get there. We'll make it happen. You know, it's just, it's a, well, like I said in the, in the paper, it's amazing. You know, all the gas that's been on this thing, this is, a, this is a great way to market your business, you know. But they must not have felt that was what they wanted to do. I never called back and asked them why. I just went along with my regular life and tried to find another sponsor. Thies also said a new sponsor could be revealed as early as next week. This weekend, the one and only Governor's Cup Series rivalry, which pits UAF against UAA, could be the one where the records do matter. So much on the line for both teams. This could make for some high-octane hockey. UAF comes in tied for third in WCHA, while UAA is tied for fifth. Alaska has already clinched a playoff spot thanks to their sweep of number four, Fair State. Now they play for home ice in the first round of the playoffs. They could if they get a split in this series, which would give UAF home home ice, but UAA will also make the playoffs with the win. The Seawolves could finish as high as third or as low as ninth. Only the top eight teams make the postseason. The Nanooks are rolling, winning eight of their last nine games. Colton Beck is four points away from 100 career points, and Cody Kunick is tied for the WCHA lead in points with 38. He also is tied in game, winning goals with six. Matt Bailey of Anchorage has the other six. Bailey has 32 points to lead UAA. Goalies Chris Kamal and Rob Gunderson are fourth in six in goals allowed for the Seawolves. The Seawolves are coming off a bye and were swept by Ferris before that. The season series is tied 1-1. These last two games, so critical for both teams. Everybody's been working hard in practice, and the little run that we have going on right now is, is makes it that much more exciting. But... Uh, there's still four huge points on the line for the WCHA, so uh, that's what we're kind of focusing on. Keeping that even keel, not getting too high, not getting too low, even though the fans are going. And fans will be emotional, be a very emotional game, especially playing Anchorage. And I think we left some bad blood down there on Saturday when we came back and won, so they're going to be ready to go. They had a bye week, so we got to get on them right away. I mean, you could see a lot of positive things going on in the first half of the season, and, and, and now you're starting to see those things kind of come together. So we feel good about our game. we got to you know, make sure that uh, we don't just rely on the past to have success. We've got to go out and control our own, uh, our own work ethic and our own attitude and make sure that uh, you know, we're ready to play. The first day of competition of the NCAA Skiing Championships in Midway, Utah, and Nanook becomes an All-American. Freshman Nicole Bath was close to podium appearance for UAF, finishing fourth in the 5K Classic with her top 10 finish. She is an NCAA All-American. The top five 11 skiers had to draw random numbers, and Bath she drew number one. So she started first. Bath finished the 5K Classic in 14 minutes, 7.7 seconds, a little less than 30 seconds off of first. She was also the top American and one of three freshmen in the top five. Four. For the men, Logan Holliman was 2.7 seconds out of top 10 for All-American status. Mike Fehrenbach placed 16th and Max Olix 21st, respectively. The Nanooks aren't the only hot hockey team from Fairbanks with the rivalry series this weekend. The Ice Dogs have won nine of their last 10 games to put their three-game winning streak on the line against the Wenatchee Wild. This could be another intense series as the Wild are fighting for a playoff spot and seeding six points behind the second-place Minnesota Wilderness. The Wild are led by Troy Loggins and Parker Tume with two top 10 
point scores in the league, and goalie Chase Perry is 10th in goals allowed at 2.2. The Ice Dogs, though, have a 7-4 advantage in the season series, including a 3-0 sweep in their last meeting at the Dipper. Taylor Munson, who's been making plays all year, is joined by Colton Walter and Kyle Lee and Ethan Somoza, who have come on strong in the last 10 games. Lee has 7 points in the last 3 outings. Somoza has 12 points in his last 10, and while Colton Walter has 12 assists in his last 10 games. Goalie Kevin Aldridge is second in the NHL with 27 wins. Fairbank, Fairbanks wants the league title and holds a seven-point lead over the South Division leader Amarillo. The Amarillo Bulls have four games in hand on the Ice Dogs, so Fairbanks would like to win their last six games and get home ice throughout the NHL playoffs. The Aurora, Conf the Aurora Conference basketball tournament started today. Here are some of the scores from day one. Both Hutchinson teams got first round wins. The boys led wire to wire and beat Valdez 70 to 60. Anthony Peter had 15 points and 11 boards for the Hawks. Andrew Hedeman had a game high 20 for the Bucks. The Hawks faced Monroe this evening. The Hutch girls won 57 22 over Monroe, powered by Taylor Hastings and Ellie Vizzi's 14 points. They will face Valdez tonight. The Allison girls rallied from a 20 point deficit in the second half, but falls short 48 51 to Delta. Katie Brower had 15 points to lead the Ravens. Allison will face the Valdez Hutch loser later on in the tournament. And now here's your I did a right leaderboard for Thursday. Jeff King, the former champ, is now in the top spot. He's in Ruby with 14 dogs. Following him is Sonny Lintner with 14 dogs. Martin Boozer is third in cripple and Ali Zirkel is in contention in fourth. Robert Sorley makes the top five. Twelve mushers have scratched and one has withdrawn to leave 56 mushers on the trail. The next checkpoint is Galena. And I'm out of time, but your full weather forecast is next. And as always, we'll catch you next time. Hey everyone, welcome back into Fairbanks Evening News. Less than 10 days to go for the Arctic Winter Games. So once again, a reminder, if you have Arctic Winter Games clothing, be sure and wear it tomorrow and uh, wear it proudly. And again, as far as the weather's concerned, it's going to be beautiful this weekend. Lots of clear skies. We'll tell you about that in just a little bit. Photograph tonight, a beautiful moonshot. This one sent in by Alicia Libby. And as you can see there, she was able to capture the, uh, the beautiful side of the moon there with the craters and everything. And then a little sliver of moon, moon uh, there, sh the sun they're actually showing through. And again, we're uh, thanks to the uh, photos at ktbf11.com. If you have one, by all means, send it in and share it with us. Numbers look like this out the airport, 16 degrees after a high of 19, low last night, 5 below. Record high, 1955, 44 degrees. Record low, 40 below in 1956. Sunrise, uh, 743. Sunset, 625, giving us 10 hours, 43 minutes of daylight, a gain of 7 minutes from yesterday. On our satellite and radar, nothing going on across the interior. High pressure building in, helping to bring the colder air in from the north, and all the moisture staying way down to the south and the southwest. As far as what's going on across the rest of the state, well, a little more activity moving in across southeast Alaska. Ketchikan looking at in increasing clouds. And then we're looking at uh, cloudy to party cloudy skies across the uh, Gulf with lots of sunshine elsewhere across the state. Nine degrees below at Barrow for the high today. Lower 48 weather, a new storm system moving ashore in the Pacific Northwest and the West Coast, bringing more rain to Southern California and some snow across the higher elevations. The storm that was over Texas a couple days ago, working its way back across the Florida Peninsula and up the East Coast, so it means more rain for those folks. Jet stream again, bringing a lot of cold air in from Canada, diving across the Great Lakes and uh, down to the South. Things are looking pretty good for the most part. A little bit of rain shower activity over the uh, southern sections of Texas uh, over the weekend. Back to Alaska for tomorrow. Flurries and patchy fog for Barrow and Fort Yukon. Sunny skies in Nome. Over the interior, looks like nice weather. Lots of sunshine at all three locations. While over southeast Alaska, sunny skies at Juneau. But then more clouds and even some snow possible in the afternoon for the Ketchikan area. Over to the southwest, mixed showers for Cold Bay. A chance of rain and snow for Kodiak and just Partly cloudy skies for the most part at Bethel and over the south central regions looking at uh, mostly sunny skies for the entire region. Okay, once again, time for our kids weather all this week talking with the kids from Chinook Charter School. But tonight, here's the teacher with a weather fact. Hello, I'm Erin and this is my 4th, 5th and 6th grade class at Chinook Charter School. And we have a weather fact to share with you. Class, did you know that the largest hailstones ever recorded were produced on April 14th, 1986 in a storm over Bangladesh? They weighed up to two and a quarter pounds each. 
And next week, we'll be doing it all over again with the kids from Badger Road Elementary School. Real quickly, our road conditions for a Thursday night showing the blowing and drifting snow at the higher elevations around the summits. I've got 25 to 30 miles an hour will reduce visibilities. Otherwise, icy patches and ice glaze on all the roads. So be very careful, even in the Fairbanks area. There's a lot of icy patches out there, too. Our forecast for tonight, 9 degrees below zero, cloudy skies, occasional light snow, slowly ending. Uh, and the uh, morning flurries will become partly cloudy later on uh, tomorrow, 12 degrees, and the extended forecast as you can see here, looking at uh, partly cloudy to clear skies right on through the weekend with a little bit of light snow for Monday and Tuesday. Temperatures slowly warming up, especially on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday to 14 degrees. Well, overnight lows will once again be a little chilly over the weekend, down to 10 degrees below zero. Pretty consistent all the way across the board there after a very cold Saturday night. Mmm, return of the cold. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Of looking forward to that. One real quick note, we're going to have the uh, award uh, presentations tomorrow night at the uh, Ice Park. And I'm going to be the MC for that. So it'll be kind of fun. All right. Wow, Thank cool. you, Mike. And yeah. that's all the time we have from all of us here at the News Center. Have a great night. Good night.